Hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Jeff Mendelson, and this is the One Big Tip Podcast. My guest today is Ed Troxel. Ed is a video coach and online marketing expert teaching agents how to show up on video for their social media and marketing so that they can close more deals. Ed was ranked as one of the top 15 coaches in Santa Rosa by Influence Digest. As a former Apple employee, he brings a unique skill set to the table from sales, marketing, strategizing systems and processes to teaching the importance of showing up as yourself on video so that you can stand out from the competition and become the agent of choice. So this is going to be a great conversation today. I love talking about this stuff because the whole thing about, you know, showing up on video and we now have all of these different channels that, you know, some of us seemingly need to be on. And there are so many different ways to do it. We're going to talk about all of that today. So I'm really excited. Ed, thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and for us to dive in and get some actionable steps that listeners can take. I love it. I love it. Ed, do me a favor. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what makes you so amazing. Yes. Thank you so much. So I'm a video coach and I didn't think I'd be a video coach back when I first started my business a little over seven years ago. I actually started with just tech support and web design uh, because that was my world. I came from Apple. I came from a background of helping small businesses and nonprofits with their tech needs and being in the office with them and being able to really be the techie on demand for them. But when I started my business and went full-time entrepreneurship, I had to do something different. I had to market myself differently. And the only thing that would make me stand out was video. And it was great. I found the solution, but it was also not so great because I didn't want to be on camera. I didn't like the way I looked on camera. I didn't like the sound of my voice. And I just didn't want to be in front of that camera. And I realized it wasn't about me anymore. It was about my business and making a bigger impact. And so I had to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. I had to have a conversation with myself in my backyard to see what did I want to do? Do I want this business to be successful? Do I want to stand out? Do I actually want to be here next year and the year after that and the year after that? And I said, yes. So I had to start showing up on camera. And it wasn't just show up on camera where we just grab our phone and we're on video. No, no, no. I had to go live on camera to a program called Periscope for anybody who remembers pretty much one of the first live streaming platforms from back in the day and go live to the world. I mean, obviously the world wasn't watching me, but I was live to anybody and everybody who wanted to show up, which as you probably know, is a little terrifying, especially if you don't want to be on camera. But that's what I had to do for my business. And thankfully, not only did that help my business, but that also helped me personally. So the growth went both personal and professional, and it has brought me here a little over seven years later. You know, what's really cool about that story. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. What's really cool yeah. about that story is that we all have 4K amazing video cameras in our hands today, yes. right? All of us. And, um, you know, it's so easy to do it, but you're right. There's that fear factor and, oh my God, what are people going to say? You know, like what's going to happen? I mean, listen, I'll be the first one to tell you my biggest fan is my mom, right? She's the one who likes every single one of my videos. Right. And you know something for a long time, she was it. Right. And she would be, you know, you, and you just go out there and you do it. So, you know, like anyone who I would say, first of all, anyone who has this fear of, you know, what happens if I mess up or what if somebody, what if somebody sees me mess up, you know, something who cares the people that the first people that are going to see you mess up are the people that love you. So that's first of all. Right. And second yeah. of all, you know, it just takes practice. You know, not that I'm not that I invite people to do this, please don't go and listen or watch my first videos. Right. Cause they're absolutely horrid. Right. <laughs> but, um, you know, after it, you know, after 350, 400 interviews later, yeah, you, you know, you've learned a thing or two about a thing or two and you get better and you go ahead and do it and you put yourself out there. So thank you so much for sharing that. What I'd like to dive in a little bit more about is 
first of all, what kind of platforms do you recommend? Because each platform that we're going to talk about today, each one of these social networks, right? Between YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, you know, and there are 30 others all around the world. Like, I don't want to be on all of them, right? I don't think I need to be on all of them. And the thing is, is that each one of them has like a different nuance, right? Has, you know, think of it as like going to, is like, you know, going to a city's downtown. If you go there during the day, it's one kind of neighborhood. You go there at night, it's a different kind of neighborhood, right? Oh, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, how you help people figure out what the, what the best neighborhoods, what the best channels for them to, for them to be in and how all that plays out. Yeah. So the best channels to be on, and it may only be one right now, depending on where you're at in what I call your video journey, but the best channels to be on is the ones that you're already active on. I don't mean just have a profile on that you maybe set up 10 or 20 years ago, but actually active on. Where are you showing up? Because you got to start with you. I mean, everything starts with you. And one you want to know where are you showing up? So for a lot of my clients, it's Instagram. They're probably on Facebook in terms of a profile, Facebook, LinkedIn, which they probably haven't touched in a long time, uh, and some other ones. But let's just use Instagram, for example. So start there. If Instagram's your platform, start on Instagram. And for a lot of people, starting with stories, believe it or not, is the easiest way for them to get into video because it's something that they have used because it's still kind of hiding in the background, if you will, because you're not necessarily putting yourself all the way out there like you would with a normal post, right? It's stories that are only available for 24 hours and it's a way for you to kind of practice and and put things out there, but still kind of hide. So stories is a big one for people. And thankfully, we're in a time where not only is the format vertical for video, popular, I should say, the popular choice is vertical, which stories has, Instagram Reels, TikTok, Facebook Stories now, uh, Facebook Reels. So the vertical option, which is just you holding your phone like normal, has really become mainstream over the years. Before... And in some cases, still, you would do this. But before, we used to flip our phone to landscape and have the whole section taken up. And so there's no black bars. Um, There's still times for that, of course. But vertical has taken over. So therefore, wherever you start, in this case, Instagram, you can record those videos and you can actually repurpose them to other platforms, such as Facebook or TikTok or wherever else you might be showing up. YouTube Shorts now, which is becoming very, very popular because it has to compete with all of the other platforms. You know, one of the interesting things about, uh, you know, about these different platforms is that, you know, like we think of YouTube as this longer format thing, right? If I want to learn something, I just go to the University of YouTube and, you know, look for what it is that I'm trying to learn. And there will most likely be at least five videos out there that are maybe 10 to 30 minutes in length that show me exactly what it is I need to do. Right. And then you have TikTok where you have these really short, very, you know, very snappy type videos that basically teach you almost the exact same thing in under two minutes. Right. And there, there's really, and it's really interesting how people are adapting towards making these shorter, the shorter, punchier, uh, videos. How do you, uh, uh, how do you help people coach through like, you know, just changing their mindset of, you know, if they're used yeah. to presenting a webinar or presenting a course, you know, 30 minutes talking about one thing, you know, getting them to condense that down into such a small time frame. What does that look like? Oh, I love that you bring this up because even before, TikTok. I, I studied a lot with the online marketing, or sorry, online marketing space, but specifically the online courses. And what drove me nuts was these long videos. You know, you have these 20, 30 minute videos that don't get to the point. And, and half the time you're still left with questions on well, how do I do this? What do I do? So I've always been a fan of short, sweet, to the point videos. And in fact, keeping them under 10 minutes, ideally five in general, is great if you get straight to the point. So then 
Now we enter into this stage of TikTok land and YouTube shorts and short form video is fire right now. It's just blowing up the internet and we have to shift our mindset and it's going to help us. So for those who are used to long form, it's going to help you because now you have a ton of content, right? Which is great. Now we just have to go in with that mindset of short, sweet to the point. And what are the key points? This is actually why I don't like having a script when it comes to video. I like having a topic and one to three talking points because that way you cover those points. And if it is a long video, let's say it's 10 minutes long, you have now at least three clips, one for each talking point that you can share out on social media. That could be 30 seconds, that could be two minutes, whatever works, but it allows you to think differently. So it's all about thinking about what's your topic, what are you the expert on, and how can you break that down into bite-sized pieces of information so that way you can hook your audience and really attract them into your world so that you can have more conversations with them, but they're going to be more uh, precise conversations because you're going to train yourself to be more to the point. You know, I love that you shared that. And this actually makes a good segue into, you know, the next part that I really want to talk about. So one thing is about, you know, creating these videos, showing up and demonstrating your knowledge so that when people actually see you, they're like, okay, I, I get it. Ed knows what he's talking about. You know, I want to work with Ed type thing. How do you then make the jump from, You've given away all this free value to actually getting them onto your site and filling out your, you know, filling out your form, entering in your funnel and ultimately becoming clients. How do you, help, you, you know, how do you help people, you, you know, use that video so that they can make uh, the, you know, more people come to them and attract, you know, better clients instead of just fishing, you know, for leads or sending out mailers, you know, things like that. Such a great question. And so this ties back to what I call your video journey. And it's actually a five-step process. And so the first step is start, which you're listening to this podcast. So congratulations, you, you've checked that box. Um, next is going to be to plan. So you started, now you're planning. And in the planning stage, this is where you're not just thinking about what you can share with your videos, through your videos, I should say, but what's that call to action? So in the planning stage, you're putting together structure for your videos. So that way you know what your topic is, your talking points, your call to action, that CTA. That's the big one because you're doing the work, you're sharing the information, people are getting to know, like, and trust you, and they're in consumption mode, right? When we watch TV, we're consuming content. And so we have to be told what to do next. That's just like when you hear, uh, you know, uh, some kind of new medical drug or something. They're always telling you to go somewhere or to call a number and you hear it over and over. And it's that repetition, which is why we talk about being consistent with your content and showing up consistently and having a call to action that is also consistent. So think about it in uh, a season. What season are you in right now in your business? If you're trying to promote your email list, for example, then your call to action on your videos should be driving people to sign up for your email list. And that way you can actually have that repetition built up. Because if you continuously throw out all these random spots, places, like go to my website, show up on uh, Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, uh, sign up for my email list. People are like, wait, what? What was number one? Now I'm, you said number five? And, and so we're all over the place. So we got to simplify it. And it's really hard because we, it's almost like niching down, right? Where we feel like we're getting too close and, and then we're missing all of the action out here. And we're really not. When we start to really narrow it down and focus, then we can expand and reach more people. And I use the email list very specifically here because it's a way to get your subscribers from YouTube, your followers from social media into your world so that you can connect with them directly and you're no longer dependent on those other platforms. And here's a bonus tip when you think about that. Now you can send people to your email list, they subscribe, and if your goal is to get them to subscribe to your uh, YouTube channel, well, guess what? 
your first email that welcomes them should have some information about, hey, check out my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe. So now you have them in your email list and you're going to have them over on your YouTube channel. You know, I love that you articulated that point because what a, the point that a lot of people miss here is that the email list is the only platform that you truly own. Everything else is borrowed, right? Yes. Anyone can be kicked off at any time for any reason off of TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, you know, just any of them. And yeah. you don't get a reason and there's no one to call, right? So exactly. if somebody gets kicked off, like that's it, but you can still email them. Right. And that's one of the most important things is that you got to be building that email list, even if you have it on like a slow, slow percolate, you know, where you have, you know, where you're just sending them like, uh, you know, one or two things a month, whatever it is, you got to get that email address. So 100%. I really love, uh, um, I really like how you, uh, how you brought that up. I want to ask you something though. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about a case study of how you were able to help a real estate agent just sort of, you know, come out of their shell, start using the tech that they already had in their hand. And, yeah. you know, how were you able to help them transform into making bigger sales, attracting bigger clients? Yeah. How did that come about? Such a great question. And it comes to shifting the mindset, right? A lot of it is that mindset, which is why I specifically don't start with technology when I'm working with my clients uh, around video coaching. We actually start with mindset and go into that planning stage before we ever get to what tech and recording, because it's all about the mindset. And so with one of my agents, that's they were already recording video using their phone, but they just weren't feeling comfortable with it. They weren't confident with what they were putting out there. They weren't sure how to do X, Y, Z on the, the phone and inside Instagram. And so they knew that they could get better at it and that they just needed a little help. And so once we started working together, we started to go over the tech pieces, of course, but it was really the mindset and having the structure in place, knowing that one, you don't have to record five videos a day for the rest of your life. We break it down into simple, actionable steps that keep you sustainable over time. And also, I mentioned earlier, seasons. Just like we have here on podcast with podcasts, we have seasons on our on and off seasons. We have season one, season two. Same thing with our favorite show on Netflix or Hulu. Everything has seasons. So does our content. And that's what I teach my clients is to be able to have a structure in place, know when they're going to be on and off season and be able to have that content planned out so that it is easy for them to just pick up their phone and share that content when they want, where they want. It's really, really important to have that shift. And by doing this and by empowering you, the agent, to be able to record your videos when you want, where you want, you allow people to have more access to you. You start to attract more of your ideal clients. And then you start getting more calls, just like my one of my agents who knows that from her videos, she's gotten calls from people who didn't even know her beforehand. But because they saw her video on Instagram and on YouTube, they got to know, like, and trust her. And they called her and knew that she was the one they wanted to reach out to because they saw her videos. And that's the power that video has. And we see right now with AI taking over chat GPT and Google's new Brad and all these other things, there's, there's a lot of things that are going to be coming up that can make our jobs easier, maybe replace jobs, whatever it may be. But the one thing that can't replace us and really the one thing that differentiates us from everyone else is showing up on video as we are. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. Ed, where can people find you online and how can they reach out to you directly if they want to learn more? Yeah, definitely. I would love it. Feel free to uh, head over to my website, edtroxel.com. The link is right there on the screen and send me a message. You're going to see my face and a video all over that website. And at any time you can message me, whether it's text, audio, or video send me a video message. Just, it's just you and me just have a chat and I'll point you in the right direction. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been really enlightening. I love talking about this stuff because it really gets people to come out of their shell and, you know, to really understand like what are the possibilities and it's all using stuff that we all have in our hands today. So this is really great. Uh, Ed, thank thank you you so much for joining me today. Yes.